A charge particle of mass m and charge q is projected into a transverse uniform magnetic field in a cylindrical region of radius capital R and it's been given with this velocity. Now you got to understand this magnetic field is not extended till infinity. The cross section has been given here. This is present only the cross section is going to be the circular one. Now what are the options? Let's have a glance. We need to calculate the time spent, the angular deviation, the change in momentum and the distance traveled. Now everything is going to happen once we see the trajectory. Now to go with the trajectory I need to go first with the radius because anyway it is very clear that velocity is perpendicular to magnetic field so the path will be circle. In our case it will be a part of a circle right but then we need to calculate that radius. So the expression of the radius please do not confuse with this radius. The radius of that path is m v naught by b q. So clearly that radius comes out to be root 3 times capital R. You get that? Ah, it means things are not going to be so simple. Here it enters and the direction of the center is going to be upward and that distance is root 3 times r. Okay? So the path is going to be, now just to help you to calculate, if imagine the magnetic field was, you know, infinitely placed, just to get an idea of the trajectory, the path would be something like this. Let me finish it here. Okay. So now I could see this is the situation when the magnetic field was present. But in our case, we know after this, you know, as it exits, it's not going to bend. After that, it's going to go straight. So that was just for the reference. Now you could see here this is the deviation produced by the magnetic field. So my first job is to calculate this particular angle. Let me name it as theta. And this is also going to be root 3 times r. Now it requires a little bit of serious thought about computing. So what I will do is that let me connect a line here and together even from here. Okay, this will make the matter fairly simple now. Now let us just realize, can you give me the value of this angle and this angle? That is simple because this is an isosceles triangle, right? So uh, the sum of these is 180 minus theta divided by 2. So that is going to be 90 minus theta by 2 and even for that. So it clearly indicates this particular angle, the complete, that has to be theta by 2. I think now I can calculate the value of theta. Let us see how. First of all, let me concentrate on the chord. Let me name it, okay, M and N. Let us, you know, concentrate on this line, M, N. Now, do you see, how can I find the length of M, N? I can drop perpendicular from here. So, root 3 r. So, if I drop the perpendicular here and let me give a perpendicular sign. Now, this length between this and this, I do not want to name further. So, that is going to be root 3 r cos 90 minus of theta by 2 is this particular length and even this length is also same. So, we need to add a factor of 2. But if you see via the lower triangle by triangle M O N, this length can also be found, this chord length can also be found by the similar logic but from the lower triangle. So this M O, do not forget, is capital R. So that is going to be R cos theta by 2 and there is also another R cos theta by 2. So you would be multiplying by a factor of 2 done. If you see it is an easy solution now, when you solve that you get the value of theta as 60, so that would be pi by 3. A little bit of thought provoking but this much is expected from 
you people. That much is purely expected. All right. All right. Now, after that, after we calculate this thing, let's try to understand the time spent by the particle in magnetic field. Now, I think now we can easily do that. How do you use the expression? Theta equals to omega multiplied by t. Theta is pi by 3 because that is the total deviation and omega is of course b q by m multiplied by t and when you solve that you are going to get option number a is correct. Option number b angular deviation of velocity is pi by 2. No, that is false because we have calculated it is pi by 3. Number c the change in momentum no problem. Do you see, if the angle between this radius and this radius is 60 degree, the angle between the velocity would also be 60. So that means the velocity has deviated by an angle of 60 degree. So how much will be the change in velocity? The change in velocity is going to be 2 v and how much sine 60 by 2, sine 30. It's simply the change in velocity. But the question had asked us the change in momentum. So, hey, no problem, you just multiply it by m, you plug the value of v, you are going to get option number c as the correct one. How about d, distance? All right, so you need to find that length which the particle has traveled, this one. This is the distance travel. So, essentially, that is an arc of this radius root 3 r. So, how much will be that arc length? Well, not a problem. Uh, root 3 r is the radius multiplied by the angle is pi by 3 and option number d comes out to be correct. It was worth doing. Let us go with the next one. A small object is placed at a distance of 10 centimeter from a convex lens. All right silvered at one surface. So, silvering of lens a regular concept that we do during the preparation. Now, the parameters of the lens that have been given mu, radii, object is kept there. What are we supposed to comment on? Whether the nature of image is real or virtual, the distance of the image and the power of equivalent mirror. Now, the first thing is how do we solve? You know, we find the net power of these combination, but for that I will be requiring the focal length of the lens. Okay. So, okay, here let me go. 1 by focal length of the lens is uh, mu, which is 1.5. So, mu minus 1. So, that is 0 0.5 into 1 by r1, which is 1 by 20 and minus of minus so 1 by 30 because these are so simple stuff. I expect that you know all these things. Okay. So, this is 1 by 2 and 20, 30. So, down is 60 and 3 plus 2 that is 5. So, 5, 12 to 24. That is great. So, I got the focal length of the lens to be 24 centimeter. Cool. That is done. But still we have not done yet. This is the first part. How about the power of the mirror or the focal length of the mirror? That hardly matters. Focal length of the mirror that is going to be minus of 15 centimeter because this acts as a concave mirror and the radius is this much. So, f by 2. Now, how do we calculate the net power? So, the net power that is 2 pl plus of pm. Does that make sense? Now, 2 pl. So, that is going to be uh, 2 by 24 power of lens that is 1 by fl and plus power of mirror that is 1 by 15. But please be careful with the unit. Now, that would be uh, very essential because it is in centimeter and uh, here the power, the option that has to be commented on diopter. So, that is no problem. You multiply by this and you get or you know 
you got to multiply by 100 for obvious reason because this is in centimeter so 1 by 100 to convert it into meter let's see the calculation now when you solve this particular thing how much am I going to get first of all I need to go with the LCM right 385 so 120 and 5 to 10 plus uh, 24 5 okay 5 to 10 plus 15 that is 8 okay multiply by 100 so that's going to be 18 by 120 so that's going to be 18 so 9 by 60 multiply by 100 I think the first part now we can come in that's equals to 15 diopter okay now after this the next part is there we need to comment on this image position and everything now the first thing is this is the equivalent you know combination the focal length will come as 60 divided by 9 centimeter you know just removing off the meter part but you also know that finally the equivalent combination will act as a mirror isn't it why because you say that I'm not interested what happens inside I send the light ray it comes back so it's a mirror for me but a mirror having positive power that means it will act as a concave mirror so if you want to put the sign you need to put the negative sign so the equivalent arrangement behaves as a concave mirror of you know uh, how much focal length 60 by 9 centimeter so it is something like how much 9 uh, slightly less than 7 slightly uh, less than 7 is the focal length so clearly the object is between f and 2f so the image has to be real so that's correct so if a is correct b would be incorrect image is at a distance 20 centimeter from lens now you can do that you can put the mirror formula the object distance is there the focal length is this and you solve it that will give you option number c okay all right let's go for the next one and this would be a final question of this segment multiple option correct an elastic conducting cord of length l naught okay this is that and force constant k is fastened to two nails n1 and n2 as shown uniform magnetic field b is present as shown if a constant current i is passed through the cord then in steady state let's see now the moment i pass the current you can see the direction of the force i l cross b l cross b uh, you know the force would initially start in this manner every point will get a force in this manner and eventually you know this has to convert into the uh, shape of a circle how come because n1 is there n2 is there so when it goes and you also know that eventually the force will be acting perpendicular in this manner so clearly shape of the cord will be a circular one and so bc would be incorrect magnetic force you know but still the uh, length end to end length is l naught and the magnetic field is uniform so what really matters is only the end to end length so i l cross b option number d would also be correct now guys we'll go to the next portion where numeric value based question would be there